I've tried a lot of different ultra-wide monitors, and the reality is none of them are perfect. There's always a few things you won't like. Sometimes the sizing is just a little off, or they're not quite curved enough, or not curved at all. Or they're lacking features like Thunderbolt, where I can just plug my laptop straight into it to output an image and charge it at the same time. Well, this is the 40WP95C-W from LG, and despite the awful name, it's just about as close as I can get to an ultra-wide I really enjoy using. It has a 4K resolution, USB-C charging with built-in Thunderbolt 4 connectivity. And in this video, I want to mainly talk about my experience with this monitor and if it's maybe something you'd consider for your own workflow, especially if productivity is high on your list. But first, let's get all the specs out of the way. At 40 inches wide, it's on the larger end of the ultra wide scale. It's also your typical ultra wide 21 by nine aspect ratio, but with a 5K 2K resolution. This gives it the same vertical pixel count as a typical 4K screen, but I'll talk more about that a bit later. The screen is also IPS with an anti-glare coating, which means good viewing angles, and it has a five millisecond gray to gray response time. So if you do any light gaming, you won't notice that much input lag. And it also has a 72 Hertz refresh rate, which is slightly more than the typical 60 Hertz you see in most monitors. Maximum brightness won't blow you away, but this is fairly typical for most monitors in this range. Moving on to build quality, like most LG monitors, it's okay, but leaves a lot to be desired. The monitor chassis is made entirely from plastic, but I do like the clean white color scheme at the back. The chassis is also quite thick and looks chunky from the sides and top. That being said though, the part you'll be staring at for 99% of the time looks good with thin bezels and a relatively minimal front logo. The stand is also made of plastic and while it looks fine and does a decent job at keeping the monitor stable, it's a far cry from ultra wides from competitors like Dell, who offer a much sturdier stand made from solid metal. Now, although I don't really have any complaints about the stand, you will still get some slight monitor wobble here and there. And I found this especially prevalent with standing desks. That being said, most ultra wides weigh in excess of 20 pounds or 10 kilos. And combined with their sheer length, it's difficult to avoid wobble altogether. It does have a standard visa mount on the back though. So if you do have a sturdier monitor arm, it can be easily swapped out. If you do end up keeping a stock stand, adjustability is very impressive for a monitor of this size. And I had no issues getting it into the appropriate position on my desk. I wish it went a bit higher, but at that point the wobble would be much more noticeable, so I wasn't too bothered. Moving on to ports and connectivity, there's an impressive amount on the back. And I always love LG's placement of their ports. It's so easy to access compared to other brands where it's underneath the chin of the monitor. You'll also get some extra USB ports on the right for quick access. Although this can be tricky to access due to being more recessed. You pretty much have to stand up and reach to the side if you wanna plug anything in. One of the most standout features of this monitor though is that it has Thunderbolt 4 connectivity with 96 watts of power delivery. This allows you to connect power hungry laptops via a single cable to get full charging capability while outputting an image and also being able to access any devices plugged into the monitor with Thunderbolt 4 speeds. This is a game changer because most other similar monitors only have USB-C connectivity, not Thunderbolt 4, so they're much slower. These higher speeds allow you to connect external drives, for example, and get very respectable speeds. Although for some high-end drives, you'll still get better results by attaching them directly to your Mac. You'll also be able to daisy chain two displays to your computer via one of the two available Thunderbolt ports. And you can simply attach keyboards, mice, speakers, etc., and connect them automatically when you plug your laptop in via the Thunderbolt port. All of this means that the monitor also acts as a dock and you might not even need to go out and purchase some kind of external hub or dock for your laptop. Although I already have a Thunderbolt 4 dock, so I simply connect the monitor to my dock via DisplayPort. 
There are also built-in speakers and they're actually pretty good compared to most monitor speakers. They sound clear and have a bit of bass. That being said though, you'll still want to get a proper speaker system or a pair of headphones. In typical LG fashion, the monitor has a joystick control button that you use to navigate the menu. A joystick is so much more preferable to the usually awful plastic buttons you often see on other monitors. The menu system itself is very basic and really doesn't have a lot of options but it gets the job done. One thing I absolutely love is that the power supply is built in. So you don't need to have a huge power brick laying on the ground or attached underneath your desk. Okay, so let's talk about actually using this monitor day to day. For productivity, it's great. I mean, I used to be a big fan of dual monitors, but just couldn't quite be 100% comfortable with them because there was always a bezel in the middle where my eyes naturally drifted to. And the only way to solve that was to have one monitor off to the side, which made looking at it really awkward. This LG monitor obviously solves that issue as an ultra wide. It's like having two monitors, but with no bezel in the middle. Often I will have three different web pages open when doing research or writing, and there's plenty of room to do that. Or if you have a separate computer, you can do picture by picture mode to essentially turn this monitor into a dual monitor setup. For example, if you have a Mac and a PC dual setup. And this brings me to my second point. I think the overall length and curve of this monitor is pretty much perfect. I feel like I can easily see text and images on the edges of the screen without straining my eyes or it looking too rounded. In contrast, some other monitors, for example, this one from LG that doesn't have any curve or the P3421W from Dell, where the shorter length and angle of the curve just isn't quite as nice while offering less screen real estate. The 40 inch size is also perfect for non-productivity workflows, specifically video editing. Now, while you'll probably go for a more color accurate monitor, if you're a professional editor, this LG holds up quite well, achieving 98% of the DCI P3 color gamut. It also has HDR, but again, you won't want to be editing HDR content on a monitor like this. The most useful part though, is the sheer length you can extend your timeline to. On typical 16 by nine aspect ratio 27 or 32 inch monitors, it feels far too compact at times. Going to a 40 inch ultra wide is a game changer, allowing me to zoom out and see the entire timeline easily or simply having to move and reposition less while editing. Now, remember how I mentioned the resolution is 5K 2K or essentially the ultra wide version of 4K? Well, on Windows, it works perfectly fine, but on Macs, this is good and bad. On one hand, most ultra wides are not 4K and having this high of a resolution on a screen of this size is great. It's not retina like the studio display, but it is noticeably better and more clear than 1440p like the Dell P3421W. The trade-off though is the scaling can get a little wacky. At native 4K resolution, everything is far too small. So you have to go into system preferences and change the scaling, which makes everything appear just slightly blurrier. It's not really noticeable for a lot of people, but some people do notice it and don't like it. The reason for this is because macOS simply doesn't scale very well unless you're using a native resolution, like the retina screens on a MacBook or the studio display or pro display XDR with their 5K and 6K resolution screens. There are apps and programs that can help the scaling on non-native resolutions, but currently that's really the only workaround and it's not a perfect solution. And no, I didn't notice any decrease in performance from scaling, at least on Apple Silicon Macs. For me personally, this isn't something that should put you off a monitor like this. There are simply no native Mac resolution ultra wide monitors that exist. These are your only options. And although 4K won't display perfectly here, it's still noticeably better and clearer than 1440p. Moving on to price, make sure you're sitting down because this monitor is expensive, coming in at 1799 US dollars at the time of this video. Now, compared to other 40 inch ultra wide monitors like the Dell U4021QW at $1,900, it 
is cheaper. But if you're prepared to sacrifice a few features like the larger screen, the built-in power supply, 4K resolution, and Thunderbolt 4, you can get a similar ultra-wide for much less. Like the Dell U3821DW or the LG 38WN95CW at around $1,200 each. And when such good monitors like these exist, it's hard to justify that extra $600 bump. Even if you're a professional who spends all day in front of your monitor and maybe even your job is expensing part of the cost. So yeah, overall, it was a pretty positive experience. This is the first time I've ever experienced 4K on an ultra wide. I have to say I am really enjoying it. But for me personally, I think the price is just too much. I don't think it's worth it for most people unless you do have that disposable income or like I mentioned, maybe your job is gonna pay for half of it like you're a remote worker. But apart from that, if you can't afford it, it's a very, very solid buy, lots of premium features. I also really liked the Thunderbolt 4 capability. So if you don't already have a Thunderbolt 4 dock, that's three to $400 you're gonna save right there as well. But apart from that guys, hopefully you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.